hide or something, he can check that behind. Even, I don't think he has hearts that often, but if he has, he can check them as well. Like, there's just no point in checking, you just need to keep on batting. But he folded. Uh, so, yeah, nothing you can do there. But still in the pretty nice pot. I have a pretty good stack by now. I'm fed in chips now, that's pretty, uh, fault, I guess. But looking pretty good. As you can see, once again, times just five calling. Although it's more reasonable with this stack. Uh, like, he's up against the other big stack. He can afford to sort of fall in position. Now Ronald Grower squeezes. I'd say regardless of what he has here, that's a really good squeeze. Um, cause the first thing is Mormon. Even though he's under the gun, he's opening a lot of hands. And times, whenever he flat calls in that spot, he's never that strong, I don't think. Uh, like he's just gonna free bet all his real good hands. Like he could, he could just call something like nines or Ace Jagger or something here and maybe call it off, but I think that's a pretty, pretty good spot to squeeze, and it also looks pretty strong actually, even though it's only 20 big ones. It's because he's doing it against an under the gun racer. Uh, and yeah, Pimes is tangling it here. I don't think he's ever very strong here at all. But he has a lot of chips and he's getting an okay price, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not really happy with the results, obviously. I'd rather both see a player get knocked out, so move up the pay scale, and I'd rather have the more inexperienced player have all the chips, but... Oh well. Yeah, that's another thing, by the way, that I don't feel like people pay enough attention to. Like, just just moving up the pay scale, like, a lot of people say you should play to win, and while there's obviously some truth to that, it's also pretty important to, like, keep in mind if some people are really short, or, um, like, if you can move up easily in the pay spot, you should probably avoid a high variant spot for that. Uh, a good example here would be, like, Fighting Chicken has, like, less than eight big blinds. I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't get it in here ever, I'm just saying that he's going to be in the blind right now, for example, so he's probably going to bust a double pretty quickly. And like, him, him middle, like, moving up the pay ladder basically is, is more important than most people are giving him credit for, is what I'm saying. And Mormon shoves any two cards here, I believe. Just about any two at least, maybe not do seven off, do three off, but certainly... 8-5-R for 6-9 suited, or like he's, he's jamming a ton of hands here. Yeah, deuce 9 suited, and Fighting Chicken makes a really good call here. Uh, jack 9 suited, or uh, Jack 9 off, I'm, I'm surprised by that. That he made that call, but that's a really good call. And not just being results oriented because he had moment dominated, but he's definitely getting a good enough price to do that. And again, now he has like 15 big blinds or something like that's a pretty workable stacks compared to what he had for before. Yeah, about 15. Sorry, my my math isn't that good, so I'm counting out a lot sometimes. <laughs> you gotta bear with that. A pretty bad spot to open for me again. Like just way too many people have have stacked, like filling the blinds, fighting chicken, or just waiting for someone to race so they can push over them. And Mormon is just waiting to free bet me. <laughs> and wow, that's a big shot. Now, no more. Yeah, because like the big one here has 32 big points. That's a really big shot. Um, not exactly sure what Mormon would have in that spot. I imagine he has like a small pocket pair that's an unexploitable shot, like a fair amount of the time. Uh, like deuces through sixes or something. Maybe some weak, weak aces, some broad ways like King Jack off, hands like that. If I should guess. And Pime C is the metal flag.
I'd imagine, yeah, I was just about to say, Ronald Grower bets again, I definitely think he has a, a hand he's value betting. Like, he's not bluffing on the turn often at all. Not against a player like that. And Pimes, that's another thing that's uh, kind of typical for that kind of player, like putting out, out small block bets in the river. Not really, probably doesn't have like a really good reason to do it, more just doesn't want to check, doesn't want to, like just not being sure what to do, like putting in a smaller bet, small bet, like you can always do that. Uh, and certainly not recommended unless you have a really good reason to, but it's just one of those things you can look out for in, in more inexperienced player, in my experience. Alright, so yeah, six suited here. Looks like a pretty easy fold here, but I'm doing something stupid. Oh, I think so. Oh man, I'm probably considering free betting here. To see, yeah, just because the thing is, like, he opened the button before, and he's gonna, with Pimes in the small blind, I suspect he's gonna open a lot of buttons. Um, and not expect me to play back at him at this, this stack dip all that often. But, uh, it's still kind of, it's, it's a pretty shitty hand to, to free bet fold. Or, like, just to free bet. <laughs> so. Um, alright, Mormon opens under the gun. And fighting chicken jams. Well, he didn't have to pay that much more, but as I said, Mormon is opening a lot of hands. Um, so he can call there with like his, his 6 7 suitor or 10 9 off or whatever he had. Alright, folding to me on the button here. And we're pretty deep, all things taken into consideration. I think this is a pretty good race. Pretty good spot to open with a with a wide range of hands. And jagged off is, is not a bad place to start. But I do get free bet. And doing anything but folding here would be really, really dumb. Uh, just not he's not gonna be blocking all that often. And yeah. But like the the reason I feel like it's an okay okay spot to just open the button is that none of them has stacks where they're just gonna uh, we raise me all in, like ship it in my face. They're gonna, they're gonna like he, did, like Ronald Grau just did like three bet me small probably, and I don't think they're gonna three bet small bluff me all that often. So that makes it a pretty, pretty good spot to him, like just about in a two. And if he if he decides to defend like say weak ace or something like that, like it still flops decently in my hand. Uh, so yeah, I I'd be opening pretty wide in that spot, I imagine. Not a hundred percent of my hands, but. A reasonable amount for sure. And man, it gets folded to Mormon versus fighting chicken blind versus blind all the time. <laughs> and I believe Mormon has raised or shot like every single time. He's probably gonna fold here, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And easy fold. The thing about, about a player like Mormon is he doesn't really, at least he doesn't seem to care that much about moving off the pay ladder. Like, you will, even when he gets in with a chip lead here, I kind of, like, he's an amazing player, but I kind of always expect him to either go out and, and nine for get first. Like, he's just that kind of guy. He just never stops putting pressure on people, which is why he's obviously such a great player. But, like, it's a lot of fun to play with him, and it's a lot of fun to watch him. Because he forces me to do stuff I normally wouldn't do. Like, he forces me to, like, when he opens, I'm forced to defend wider. I'm forced to free bet wider. Um, and, like, shove wider on him. Because that's the only way I can can really defend against, like, his relentless aggression. But sometimes it makes for some, some really interesting hands and spots. And that's, like, that's the players I enjoy playing against the most. Like, the people who put you in, in spots outside of your comfort zone. That's where you really improve, in my opinion. Yeah, so pot between Ronald and Sir Jay here. Checks back the flop. I imagine when Ronald checks back the flop here, he has some sort of showdown value for the most part. Like something like um a pocket pair or King Queen could check back an ace sometimes, but I think it's gonna bet it for the most part. I'm playing turn, obviously. He snap checks back. Yeah, I definitely think he has some sort of short on value. He 
can see bets here. Yeah, I'd say it has something like eights. Um, somewhere between sixes and tens for the most part would be my guess. Oh, sorry, there is iTunes. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, he takes it down. And Mormon opens again, even though like he's opening into at least three stacks that like can just shove on him very easily. He just he just never stops opening. It's honestly it's just so much fun to watch and be a part of. <laughs> I'm coming off as a huge fanboy here, and I guess I am, but I don't know. It's just really fun to watch like the truly top players at work, and especially ones who are just so aggressive at borders and. On being an idiot or a genius. Sometimes I'm not really sure with some of those guys. Uh, and yeah, such a Barrison just moves in. He could be shoving really wide here. But Mormon folks, he gets it up. So slowly, slowly bleeding away. Alright, can we check off here in the big one? This could get interesting. Um, this is never going to be an easy spot. Oh, yeah. Well, with Mormon opening here, like, I feel like, yeah, that makes it an easy decision for me. That's, I'm really glad he shot, actually, so I don't make a big mistake. I feel like I would just defend against him. Although I don't think, like, if, if Fighting Chicken had folded, is what I'm talking about. But I don't feel like shoving would be that unreasonable. And I honestly don't think folding would be that bad either. Because, like, you're pretty shallow, you're out of position against a good player with a hand that can often be dominated, like, as much as he's opening. It's still, well, like, it's going to be dominated a decent amount of time. I feel like call would probably be best, but it's pretty close, actually. Alright, easy fold here. Following the blanks have been real location at this table, it seems. He's been waiting for first spot. Which is a pretty good strategy with, with how aggressive this table is playing. Um, again, pretty good spot to... Not much has changed since the, the last time. We're still gonna open this for a min race. Obviously, fold to any resistance, but take it done this time. Again, like 4 7 suited, not that it matters a ton what my hand is, but if the big one decides to just defend, um, it's, a, it's a pretty nice hand to have. Like, it, can, it can flop, you can get some pretty okay flops. But, but like, when you're. Like when you're on the bottom, like I just wrote before, and with the, the jagged off and over to go, um, when when there are good players in the small and big blind at this stack up, your hand matters way less than say if, if they're if they're inexperienced players who're just gonna peel a ton of hands, then it kind of matters a lot what you can flop. But here it's not as important, uh, just because they're rarely just gonna call pretty flop. All right, I just pulled the days five off. Um, I just raised the pot. Uh, like two hands ago. I think it's a reasonable fold for sure. Um, I don't think opening would be bad either though, but I just elected to fold it this time. And Mormon just folded the button. Wow. <laughs> Fine shooting jams. It takes it out. Alright, ace queen off. Gonna then raise again, obviously. Maybe get some action. Oh, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm obviously rooting for action here, because a lot of the hands people would, would put in a lot of money with here. Like if someone, like, like if fighting chicken shops here, he often has like an ace nine through ace jack kind of hand. Or, or like king queen or queen jack, or like some hand would dominate. So that's pretty sweet. So I'll just take it down again. Which is alright as well, just staying around. 